Start her up again. High dash comes on. Oh yeah, y'all, we have some truck upgrades to discuss today. Welcome on back to the channel. I am right now preparing for a three week jaunt into the Mondanias. I'm talking Colorado, y'all, and we're going all over the state. I'm gonna be staying up there for nearly a month. And this is the truck that's gonna get me around. And on all my trucks, my last three or four trucks, I've had a cap and I've had a rack on top. But this time, on the latest adventure wagon, I decided to put a iron skillet on the top of the daggum thing because it just looks like it can hold a way more stuff at a more weight distribution effectiveness, if that makes sense. We'll get into it. But I've also got a couple of tasty additions on the inside of the truck that I want to talk about. Been testing them out for a few weeks now. Anybody that has a diesel truck, I would highly recommend these things, but uh, Banks Power sent me a couple of things. We're gonna go over those in just a second. The chickens are absolutely going nuts over here. I've gotta give them their morning jog. They like to do a little morning jog, give them some grains, scratch around, and then they go make the eggs. Talk to, eat the bugs. Eat the bad bugs, please. Oh, geez, speaking of bugs, that thing almost landed on my face. Was that a stink bug? It is. Well, let's see what we got here. Oh, a little Martha. So our other chickens are, are out here, free ranging. That's Peep, one of our Easter eggers. There's Puff, her sister. Both laying eggs now, beautiful little blue eggs. I thought you guys would be the craziest wild little raptors out of the bunch, and you've turned out to be some of the sweetest. We just, we just like you. Two weeks ago, not, not even a week ago, you could not touch this chicken. Since she started laying eggs, full transformation into a nice little sweetheart. I don't know what it is. We got a problem with Martha. She is she's low lady on the totem pole right now on the uh, the dream team. She's just not performing and she has uh, she has a problem with her eggs. I'm waiting to see today if she drops one and if it's okay. But her first five or six eggs have we've had to throw out because they have holes in them. They're like incomplete eggs. So I think her egg gland's not fully developed. My little Martha, I've been very sweet to you. Been trying to feed you up, get you to get on that nice egg laying train with the rest of the team, and you're just not you're not performing. Now, what happens to non-performing chickens? Do I need to start throwing some recipes out there? Okay, cordon bleu, chicken noodle soup. Enchiladas? Okay, there's there's a lot of options out there, okay? And you happen to be one of the most delicious breeds of chickens for their meat, not just for their eggs. Okay, Martha? She's getting a little nervous. She's getting a little nervous talking about that. I'm gonna let her down. You gotta fatten up. You're skinny, you need to put on some weight. And you gotta start dropping some quality eggs. Rest you girls, you're doing good work. Proud of you. Got a bonus spinach bundle for the top producer this month. Keep working, keep grinding. But anyway, that's part of the daily life here. Let's get into the truck and let's actually start on the inside and go to the, the banks modules and the accessories that we have on the inside. The first thing we're gonna look at is the banks pedal monster. I didn't even know what the pedal monster was until uh, banks emailed me and said, you gotta have one of these for your truck. You'll, it'll make a, you'll just see a huge difference. And they were right. And I already knew about something called the, it's basically pedal lag uh, in this truck and in other uh, modern diesel trucks, uh, the, especially the eco diesel trucks, but there's a, a delayed response in when you press the uh, throttle and then the response of the engine. So what the pedal monster does is it allows you to determine the timing of that throttle. So you can make it to where it's literally like old school where it's on a wire, you know, whoom, as soon as you hit it, the, the engine's going to jump. Or you can make it in a what you know a balance you know there's all sorts of settings there's three different modes on it and then there's settings within that mode so i'm going to show you guys that we're going to start it up and take a test drive and all that stuff so i wanted to start with this first because this is the last thing i need to do 
is just kind of tuck this thing away and zip tie it. Uh, just make it nice and pretty. But uh, this has been connected up to my truck for a few weeks now. Uh, this wire is going up to the I dash. I'll show you guys that in just a minute. But you just take this right here. This plugs in. It's dark in here, I know. It's kind of hard to see. But uh, at the top of, on my truck specifically, at the top of my foot pedal, there is a little connection that connects to the computer that goes to the engine and tells it how to respond to this. So this isn't like an old school <laughs> engine where this is connected to a wire. It's all done by a computer. So what this does, what the pedal monster does, you just replace that plug with uh, the one that comes with it. It has a male and female in, and then you run that uh, to this device, and it allows you to totally adjust the throttle response according to how you want. So the Pedal Monster actually does not give you any more horsepower, any more torque, anything like that. It actually just adjusts that timing. So if you've ever been driving your vehicle and you know maybe you're going up a hill and you're like you're pressing gas or maybe you're trying to pass another car and you're, you're pressing it and it's it's like four seconds later then it downshifts and then it goes well, this can basically make it immediate. So as soon as you press, it just vroom, just goes. It's really nice. And I've noticed it's especially nice for towing. You just don't have to work as hard. Keep working that gas pedal to get it to downshift. It'll just do it with the slightest movements and you can adjust that movement as much as you want. The next thing we got in the adventure wagon that connects to that pedal monster and then comes up to the dash is the iDash. This module right here when I cut the truck on, it, it turns on whatever it recognizes RPMs and it gives any readout that you can think of that the truck will put out. So instead of me sitting here and just kind of explaining what all this thing does, I think the easiest thing to do is just show you. It's fired up. And then we should see the I dash come on. This basically just suction cups to the window. I haven't done a super clean install on this. Like if you wanted to completely tuck this, you could, but any vehicle that has one of these ports right here. So if you've got one of these, I think it's called an OD2 port, something like that. You can plug the I dash into it. We have got to go get some diesel, my friends. So we're going to head to the Bucky's and go get us some and along the way. I'm going to show you what this thing actually reads out and how cool it is to watch what your truck or vehicle is doing. First thing that's bobbing up on the iDash is it's telling me I got a low fuel level, which is actually appearing before it even does on my truck dash. And one thing I like about that is I can get a more exact fuel readout on the iDash so I can know how many miles I've got left until I'm actually gonna run out of gas, whereas the truck, won't well, once it gets below uh, I think it's 50 miles, then it just says low, so you don't know exactly. So any sort of information that your truck is gonna put out to you, you can pull up on the iDash, and that includes error codes, you know, things that are going wrong with your truck. <laughs> I've got a lot of those. It'll actually tell you what the problem is, because it's plugging into that port, and that's the same thing that uh, the mechanics and the technicians are gonna plug into and see what those codes are. So you can see those and diagnose those before you even take your truck into the shop. You know, give your uh, technician a, a heads up, say, hey, I'm getting this code. You know, maybe they can go ahead and, and order the part or something for you, I don't, I don't know. It might speed up that process of you getting your truck back faster, so I like that fact. One of the main things that I find outstanding, and, and the truck honestly should tell you this by itself. I can't believe that it doesn't. The iDash will tell you when your truck is gonna go through a region. It, uh, so a region on a diesel, y'all, if you've got a new diesel truck, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But you never wanna stop your truck when it's going through one of those cycles. You wanna let it burn through completely. So right now it's telling me I'm at 58%. When that reaches 100%, that's when that uh, region trigger is gonna cut on and I know that my truck is going through a region cycle and you can actually watch, oh, the truck's gonna come up, cut, up, cut on again, here we go. Uh, you can actually watch your engine exhaust temperatures go up. You can see that it's burning off that excess. 
So I think it's good to know exactly where you are through that regen cycle and you can just keep driving, burn that excess off. Just gotta pull in here and get a little desolate at the Bucky's real quick. Back in action. Starter up again. High dash comes out. So you can flip through these different settings and you can say, I think it's five different pages, custom pages, and you can kind of adjust things. You can literally adjust every little thing. But right here on this setting, this is monitoring the pedal monster and this allows you to adjust your power as well. So I'm in city right now. I can adjust this. I can keep going up. Sport. And when I do that, y'all, I mean, it is like, it track is insane. Track is, is basically like, like I talked about, having a wire, like an old school wire that goes straight to the, the throttle. Um, that's what this would be like. So just to kind of give you an example here. I normally keep it midway through the city setting. I think this right here, uh, the tires might come out from under me on this one. Oh yeah. Like the, it is just straight response when it is on track. So if you've got a serious diesel and you've made a lot of modifications and you really want to squeal the tires and just make it easier on yourself, this this would be the setting right here. I mean, I'm barely pressing it and it is just boom, going. Let's turn that back down. Just give her a little gas right here. You guys can see where the stock performance would be, the stock throttle response versus the pedal monster response. So at the setting that I have it on right here, it's it's probably about 20% above stock performance. So I've been playing around with the iDash for a few weeks. I love it and I've, I've got it on an eight gauge system. I wanna see as much as possible what is going on. But I asked them, I said, well, you know, hey, what is the best, what are the best categories, the best readouts for monitoring a diesel? And right now I've got it on RPM, so you can see your exact RPMs, and you can just take mental notes of, of when, you know, you're getting the most power at certain RPMs and whatnot. It's just more specific than your actual analog gauge. Manifold air density, that's on both gasoline and diesel engines. That's like a, a true performance monitor, so you can see uh, the exact density inside of the manifold. My engine has a turbo on it, so I thought it'd be cool to monitor when that turbo's kicking in and adding that additional pressure so I can see that. I can see my horsepower, and it's really neat to see like the horsepower as you're driving, and I've towed with this thing a bunch. Very interesting to watch that. A couple other categories I think are cool for diesels. Uh, you can monitor your torque so you can see how much torque that your engine is requiring or commanding. So what I find fascinating is watching the torque versus the horsepower. So there's times like when I've had my boat towing up a hill and the engine is uh, asking for more torque than the horsepower. But you see the horsepower go up a little bit then you'll see the torque ramp up to like 100%, and it's not shifting any gears, so that's what's really neat. You're putting all that torque into that gear, and it just keeps tugging it, it's really cool. I've just learned a lot having it, quite honestly. So Banks didn't sponsor this video or anything, but I just wanna give a shout out to them because uh, they have been watching my videos, saw the videos on my truck. They seem really interested in these smaller diesels as well so that's why they wanted to create this pedal monster uh, for this specific truck and they just came out with it so uh, they're available I'll, I'll leave a link for them if you guys want to check them out you can do your own homework on on banks nice thing about these two things you can install them in 30 minutes there's you know no tools required it's just very simple plug and play even I can do it, and I know nothing about working on diesel trucks. So a couple of gizmos to make the adventure wagon plug away a little better. And let me also show you guys what's on top of this thing to help with cargo tremendously. <sighs> well, I've let it cool off to a, about a crisp 98 degrees outside. Got a little shade, so I'm not just killing myself out here. While I was at Bucky's, I got one of these jugs, racing jugs. I thought to myself with these little 
indentions right here. This would be perfect to strap down inside of the bed of the truck or even on top. You could even put water in one of these. I think I'm going to end up putting diesel in here so I can have uh, five gallons extra of diesel while I'm on the road. I was going to do a fancy jerry can holder on top of the Pioneer rack system and all that and get fancy, but that gum, it's expensive. This was like 30 bucks and I'm most likely going to be throwing a kayak and some other stuff on top of there, which I'm going to show you here in just a second. There's two very, very large bags. I got to carry enough stuff for my whole family initially. They're going to meet me up later. Uh, it's going to be an absolute buttload of things. And I'm most likely going to be testing the 300 pound loadout capacity of this rack that's on top. But let's look at an example of how this thing is going to work out during camping season. Let's step up here and check it out. Grab on to the platform, here we go. So up here we've got our duffies. These have got our sleeping pads, our sleeping bags, uh, just a lot of extra camping gear that's not extremely heavy, but takes up a lot of space. I've got a real big Husky crate that I just slide into the bed that's got the cots and it's got the main tent and it's got a few other things in it, tarps and whatnot. I keep that in there because it's super heavy. It's probably 250 pounds. Uh, but the pads I usually keep in the back of my truck and they take up like the whole back seat. So this is perfect and they're not too heavy. Right, just strap those babies down. We also have a cooler right here. So I've got a mid-size cooler. I can also use this as storage. Uh, this is a cheap one from Academy, but it's got little, uh, little holes right here so you could ratchet it down onto the platform. The whole reason I wanted this platform is just so much more square inches that you can utilize to put stuff on it and ratchet it down securely. So we've still got, you know, our underbelly typical rack. There's your bar right there. Uh, but with this platform right here, I can fill up all this whole square footage. You know, I could put a kayak on this side. I could do other stuff on this side. So um, I'm definitely going to make it arrangeable where when I go on different trips, I can um, switch things in and out. And that's what's real nice about this. Uh, this is made by Rhino Rack. My dad has a Rhino Rack. He likes it. I decided to try this one. It's pretty pricey. Uh, I think this, this uh, whole system right here was around 2100 bucks, but I just haven't had a truck without a rack system in a while, and I thought this was the cat's pajamas, so hopefully it'll be worth the money. And then, you know, they'll sell you a bunch of extra doodads. You slide in here, and you can do all sorts of stuff. You can customize this however you want, uh, but that's basically the platform, how you use it. Then, like I said, you know, you got your jerry can or water jug, whatever, you can stick that up there out of the way, uh, but as an additional little nice feature having it up here like this uh, i've got actually another jug that has a valve and you twist that valve you could use that to you know take a shower wash dishes brush your teeth or whatever maybe wash your bloody hands after you kill an elk huh hopefully hopefully that's what's going to happen and then uh lastly you know i've got a solar panel up here and just miraculously this thing fits fits in these little grooves just all nice like or you could set this up here and really get uh, get it angled at your camp and really get some sunbeams coming in and energizing your, your jackery unit. This also has some reinforced ringlets on the side so you could take some paracord or take some hooks and hang it off the platform itself. Uh, if you're getting some morning sun, you know, this midday, and you could also just set this puppy flat set or flat down for that midday sun and then you're really charging up. So that puppy right there is going to be getting a ton of use with the life of the truck. I just love having a truck cap. I love having the rack. It is so useful. I like to avoid a trailer. Having another set of axles or two or three, that's just more problems that can happen, especially when you're in hairy places. If you can put everything inside of a truck, on top of the truck, and then it's easily accessible to and almost becomes part of the camp and it can be advantageous, as I think this is, then I think it's extremely useful and not just a showy thing. If I could complain, just a few things, Rhino Rack. Um, 
it, this thing should just come with a couple of little, couple of rings, couple of cleats, something. Cause I mean, they're like 50, 50 bucks for a, a couple of rings, maybe even more than that, like a hundred, but a lot of their accessories are just super pricey. You can get a typical ratchet strap up under here. Um, but the, just the way they have this system with so many different cleat tracks, uh, or just tracks to put all sorts of accessories. I mean, you could throw a couple of rings in the box and it probably wouldn't hurt production costs too bad. So if you have a decent garage and you're and you're okay at doing some machining, you could probably make some little inserts to go into this track. And it's it's really similar to the M-Lock. Yeah, you know, the M-Lock sort of connection, if y'all are familiar with that. So y'all, I think the adventure wagon just stepped it up a little bit and it's ready to get out in the woods. And hopefully it's gonna have some antlers and a lot of fish on top of it. And we get to monitor the performance of everything while we're cruising on down the road. I don't know about y'all, but I'm looking forward to looking at some furry things out in the woods instead of just slobbery old summer scales. Anyways, y'all, thank you for tuning in to all the episodes. If you wanna check out more around here at the tree house, more chicken, whatnot, family stuff, Lake Life Family Channel, link down below. And I hope wherever you are, you're having a blessed adventure out in the woods or water somewhere. And the best of luck to you. God bless you. See you soon. Martha, what you doing here? Oh, dad gum, Martha. Martha laid an egg with no shell. Oh, little sugar booger. I think you're gonna get cut from the team and I hate to tell you what that means. Y'all pray for Martha.